connected teaching and learning. This video is going to capture a couple ideas I have uh, using some of the tools uh, in Google Documents as well as what Google Chrome and uh, Google Chromebooks will allow students to do. So you can see here I have a Google Doc that's titled Sample Math Lesson 310 Word Problems. I actually used a variation of this when I taught fourth grade last year. So that said, here's some of the pieces that I've put in and then I'll start a new document that's blank. Here it is. And show you kind of the steps that I do. So the gist. One, I have a place for name and an image. I really liked doing this and liked the idea of giving a specific location for trivial information such as name and date. So if I look here, oops, if I click the right buttons, there we go. I look here for, uh, I've got name and date, and I've got obvious information to put in and a space for it, uh, including the idea of an image. I really liked playing with this, um, especially at the beginning of the year when I taught fourth grade, capturing some images of the kids and then comparing it to images they took at the end of the year just so they could see some of their growth and their change. It's fun to see. So along with that idea, I would even go as far as to do something like this to where I'd have name here and date on this side and just remove the colons. So all that uh, is a set of possibilities because I inserted a table, all right? Directions. I was fairly consistent when I wrote directions out for my kids. I would italicize the word directions, and then from there would set up the directions of what they think they should do. And then again, when it came time to a question, I gave a specific location I wanted the question answered in. So I used tables to help me guide this when it was a Google Doc, because Google Docs otherwise, if it was a large blank space below, they would often highlight the question and start typing over the question, or they would type immediately after the question was hard for me to find. So I made it very obvious where I wanted the answer. Hence, I would write the word answer and have uh, something of a space to work in. So how do you create a Google document that allows students to add images that they can insert an image for and take a snapshot of themselves and or in this case, image of their work they did on marker boards. So here's what we've got going on. I start with a Google document. I chose to have the name be first, so I'm going to insert a table and I'm gonna give it two rows and two columns. And if you use that table insert, that's how you can get to that. And if see how I hover over that line, my mouse hovering over that column dividing line, I can actually adjust where that line's at. So when I type name, date, I can even move that over farther and then have the options and very clear space to put that. All right, next up, to italicize right there. Last, again, a table, and you can choose to put a one column table in. Now, in the last one that I did here, I had a one column with three rows to where I had the question as one, and I bolded the question so that I knew. Uh, the students would see it and they would have a more likely upper, uh, a more likely of an opportunity to actually see and understand the question. From there, I gave a space for answer. And the last one, image of work, especially when referencing the idea of math, it's really a, a powerful piece I found in my teaching there. So what I chose, image of work. And this last one, if I choose for that to be centered, I hit enter a couple of times. This would be the template. Now, what I did was I shared this via Google Classroom. So now you're seeing me here in my Google Classroom. In this Google Classroom, what I chose 
was I added an assignment. And then I gave it a title, I gave it instructions. I chose in this case not to have a due date because I'm using it for professional development, but if I was using it with students, I'd have a due date. From there, I attached that Google Doc that currently is untitled. Right? And I found that specific Google document and attached it there. Now, once you do attach that Google document, let's say that I do find that untitled. There, it's all set. This next one, students can view? No. Can edit file, as in singular, one? No. I wanted to make a copy for each student. Think of this as Google Classroom's your digital copy machine. So if I chose that, everyone gets a copy of that specific document that I've made, and I would choose to assign. It looked like this in the end. I had every student get a copy, one document, the directions, the title that is here. All right? So, now the last piece, that's where it's going, but the last piece is how do students interact with, such as a, well, a little bit ago you saw that I had image of work, or image of self, I believe. Let me give you your image. Now, how do you get that? Well, to turn on the actual camera, you just think that students have their marker board and that's me unfolding a piece of paper. Students have their marker board, or if they want their actual image, they wouldn't have a marker board. But in this case, students have their marker board. They have insert image, and they're going to choose take a snapshot. When they do that, the webcam turns on. Here I am. So that webcam turns on, and if they were to hold up their work, near that webcam and kind of move their head so they can see it. Take a snapshot. They select that snapshot. And from there, you can actually crop. Change the size what's seen so that it's just the math work that's there. All right. So you've seen is the idea of inserting tables in a Google Doc, giving directions, really being uh, consistent as can as one can with how you label it their directions. So using tables to give an area for the question you ask and the answer you ask for, as well as a place for putting images of their student work. How this looks, you end up sending it in a Google document that's shared via Google Classroom. All right, and that Google Classroom document is made with a copy for every student.